Hey guys, welcome to another episode of BTEC Academy. You're about to get schooled. Okay, today we're working again on Project Black and Blue, my O2 Civic that actually has 0405 bodywork. That's my daily driver. We're gonna be doing an engine install. And uh, not only am I gonna be installing the engine that's going in the car, but I wanna talk about the other choices as well. Typically, what most people do when they do an engine swap on the ES2 or EM2, they like to use the RSX Type S motor. This engine right here is actually uh, an 05 Civic SI motor. Uh, it would work the same way as an RSX motor. So I've got it here just to kind of demonstrate how it goes in. Let me start off by showing you the mounts. Now, as you know, the D17 that comes in that car, the engine's on this side, transmission's on this side, so we wind up having to swap things around a little bit. For the transmission side, this bracket bolts on the frame rail, and then you have this mount, which bolts on top of the transmission, interfaces with the bracket. On the passenger side, we've got a bracket that bolts on the frame rail where the motor mount used to bolt. The motor mount used to use these two holes plus a third one down here, but this sits up on top of the uh, frame rail on the passenger side. And then we use a mount we've been using with Hasbro kits, the EKK 1 kit, 2 kit, EGK kit. This is our uh, engine mount that goes on that side. For the rear, we have to use the RSX subframe. So, the rear winds up being what looks like a normal rear mount uh, for a DC-5 and we use the stock DC-5 rear bracket. Now, something interesting about this motor that you may not realize, this motor is actually the motor that comes in the EM2 in certain markets in Southeast Asia. Uh, it comes with 160 horsepower K20, and uh, it has this intake manifold on it. And the reason it has this intake manifold, not the one you see in the base RSX, is because it's much shorter. And the nose on the uh, Civic is actually really short. It's actually shorter than the EP3's nose. By the way, if you ever decide you want to do a supercharger on your EM2, the one you want to use is the one that's built for the Rove 2 5 Civic SI. That one fits really nice, does a really good job. Now this is the motor we're actually stuffing in the car. This is a K24A2, this is a TSX motor. Uh, this requires slightly different mounts. To start with, there's a block bracket on the side that is basically like the uh, CRV block bracket. Uh, it has the two top mounts on, the uh, two holes on top for the mount to run. Uh, this particular version, which is the Hasport uh, Universal K-Series block bracket, uh, actually will fit a whole bunch of different K-Series engines. Now, on that side, we have this normal mount, bolts on top, and then, of course, the same frame rail bracket, bolts on the side. On the passenger side, again, we have this bracket that bolts on the frame rail on the passenger side, but we have a slightly different mount. It's this mount right here. This is the mount that interfaces with the uh, K24 transmission that comes in the first gen TSX and also comes in the 03 to 07 Accord. For the rear, once again, RSX subframe, so we're gonna use an RSX type rear mount, but we have a special bracket that bolts to the back of the engine and transmission and interfaces with that mount. One more thing, if you decide you wanna use the 2012 Civic SI transmission, the 08 to 14 Accord, the 0 13 Accord, the uh, 09 to 14 TSX, that transmission has even a different setup. You would use this rear bracket, but you'd go back and use this style transmission mount. And for those of you who might be really adventurous, there is actually an all-wheel drive system as well. Now that doesn't use the RSX subframe, that uses a CRV, an element subframe. You would use the mount that we make for the element CRV and that would bolt right up using the same two side mounts you would find for the RSX Type S. If you look at the subframe, the big difference between these two is this rear bar. The rear bar is flat on the RSX, 
and it humps up on the uh, regular engine. Now the regular engine, because it has a D17, the header comes out the front, goes underneath the engine, and goes under the subframe. That's why it's like that. Unfortunately, that subframe is not placed in a position that makes it easy to do a swap header. Uh, if somebody made a swap header that was specific to the uh, EM2 and ES2, you would actually be able to use a stock subframe. Hasport would just make a new rear bracket that came off that, that rear mount in order to uh, use the stock subframe. But as of right now, nobody's making a custom header and it would probably wind up being kind of a one-off thing and rather expensive, not $250 like a lot of the uh, headers that are available, available for K-Swap R. All right, let's get this motor in the car. One of the things I did was I shortened this bracket right here. This is the uh, ABS bracket. Once I did that, I drilled a new hole all the way through and then I tapped the hole that was underneath in order to make it so that I could bolt it down. We thought about adding a tapped hole there right now, but I thought it was gonna be pretty much impossible for people to cut this off and get that all lined up properly with kind of just doing it blind. So we thought it better that people drill and tap that hole themselves. You could actually probably leave it loose. Even without that bolt, it's pretty tight. I just think over years it might actually eventually stress fracture. This front bolt is used for a ground because it goes all the way through the bracket into the body itself. That will keep the powder coat on the bracket from insulating the ground. There was a group of ground wires that initially attached in a slightly different place. We had to move those to this lower area on the frame in order for them to uh, still be effective. The passenger side bracket sits on the frame wall right here. Using two of the three old mount bolt holes. There's a third one, I'm not gonna use that one. bolt right in here through the top. Probably unnecessary, but what the heck, added security. As you can see, the K20 A3 looks right at home in this engine bay. The manifold comes right up to the core support, just barely enough room actually. Uh, and this is actually a very easy swap, this and the RSX Type S. 
You're going to use the EP3's throttle cable. You can use most of the parts off the EP3 for air conditioning. Uh, you're going to use uh, uh, the shifter from the RSX. It bolts right into the stock location on this, and the rubber grommet fits right in the stock location as well. Uh, the RSX harness goes right in. The wiring is not terribly difficult if you've got an LX or a DX, and plenty of people make adapter harnesses for that. Uh, just uh, because it's actually the air fuel ratio sensor is the only real difference. Uh, on some models of EX, they actually have an air, air fuel ratio sensor on those as well, but you need to do some changes to the wiring. Anyway, it works really well in this car. The one thing is, these cars come with hydraulic power steering. So if you're going to be using hydraulic power steering, you want to get the RSX power steering pump. You want to use the RSX hose, the reservoir, and then you're going to have to make a little bit of a clearance cut in the hood in order to clear the pulley because it's going to stick up a little bit kind of, uh, a little bit high and it's actually going to interfere with the skeleton of the hood. So you're going to have to make a cut there. But otherwise, this engine fits super nice in this car. But this isn't the engine I want. I want the K22, uh, the K24A2. So we're going to put that one in. Okay, this is the engine I decided to go with. This is a complete TSX, 200 horsepower, actually more like 198 or something or 97. 200 horsepower K24A2 with the TSX six-speed manual transmission. Uh, I had to make a few modifications to it in order to get it to work. Uh, first of all, I had to make a harness for it. Uh, the harnesses that uh, come on the RSX, which uh, is one that's most compatible with the electronics of this particular car, uh, it doesn't have quite all the parts in the right place. So I actually took a uh, element harness and modified it. So it's had uh, quite a few little modifications, but I liked using that because it already came with the uh, countershaft speed sensor down here, and it had plastics on it that aligned well with what's going on. One of the other changes I had to make is I had to put a, a cord throttle body on it. The cord throttle body is drive by cable. The TSX one is drive by wire. This car is not really equipped to do drive by wire. Uh, along with that, I took the throttle cable and the throttle cable bracket from an element. Those will be going on here. I've not tried that before. I'm curious to see if it works. Uh, the uh, AC pump, and it's filthy, and I think I need to clean it, is from an RSX Type S. Uh, those are compatible with the EP3 pulleys because I think they're the same part. Um, another thing I had to change was this thermostat housing. If you look right here, if this was attached, you would notice that the hose would come up. Well, we're using an EP3 radiator in this car, and that radiator outlet's right down here, so this going up doesn't really work. So I switched it for the CRV one, which is the same as EP3, same as RSX. Another option, rather than switching the whole housing, would have been just to get the RDX thermostat outer part, uh, this part of the housing with the thermostat on it. That actually points down as well and bolts straight up to this thermostat housing. Uh, one of the things that's interesting about this is this comes out a slightly different angle, so you want to actually have to bend the pipe in order to get this one to work well, seal up, and not, not piss water all over the place. Uh, the other thing I did is I put an idler pulley on this. I have power steering in this car, but I actually have electronic power steering out of an EP3. More on that later. I'm not going to go into it right now. But that allows me to run the EP3 idler pulley and kind of simplify uh, some of the hookups on this car. Uh, other than that, it's pretty much a uh, stock TSX engine. Later on, I might do a 40 degree VTC, maybe a Ford throttle body, maybe some Type R cams, but the way it sits, that's how it's going in the car. Now we're going to do the mounts. Now, as I mentioned before, this mount is quite a bit different than the one that's used for the RSX transmission. The only thing that's really uncommon is this, the height of this and where this barrel of the mount is located and this front bolt hole. Other than that, it's kind of different. Now, this is a TSX transmission. It also works with the Accord transmission from the, uh, well, first-gen TSX transmission, the magnesium one. It also works with the Accord transmission from the 2003 to 2007 Accord. So, if you're looking to, try to do it in like a budget, uh, that Accord transmission is cheap. I've seen them for, you know, 250 bucks all around and even less than that. Although I think, unfortunately, the price is starting to go up on them because we released mounts for them. So now <laughs> there's demand. There's a little more demand, exactly. 
So this is a bracket that Hasport makes that basically mimics the one on the back of the RSX Type S, uh, but it attaches to the blocks that the RSX Type S uh, bracket does not. So it grabs this block hole right here, this hole that goes through the block into the transmission, and then these two bolt holes right here. The only thing that might be a problem is this bolt hole isn't actually present on all engines. So sometimes you might have to actually drill and tap that out for a bolt. For a bolt. But having the four bolts on there makes it pretty strong. I actually ran this for a couple of years only with these two bolts, but I don't suggest that. That usually breaks out this piece right here of the metal. So the DC5 mount goes in just as it would if you had an RSX in here. Mount slides in easily. It's a flange nut, it's a normal Honda. Okay, with the rear subframe in, all the mounts tightened up. Uh, it's time now to start connecting everything. But I think I'm gonna wait till the next episode to do that. And if you like what you saw, please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps us get discovered by others. And if you like this particular episode, go ahead and hit the bell so that you get notified next time there's an episode up. So thank you very much for joining me for another episode on VTech Academy. And uh, we'll see you soon.